and welcome to the episode 227 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The last concert with Pete Best, the record start of the 1965 North American tour, and the lush orchestral session in 1969 are some of the highlights waiting for us. On the 15th of August 1962, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed a lunchtime and an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. The evening concert was Pete Best's final engagement with the band. He was to receive news of his sacking by Brian Epstein on the next morning. At the end of the show, instead, the only hint of what was going to happen was John Lennon saying that he had arranged another way of getting to the venue of the next evening engagement, when Best told him that he and Neil Aspinall would have picked him up as usual. George, John and Paul had their reasons, and history certainly proved that they were not wrong to push for a change of personnel, but still, to put it bluntly, this was a harsh treatment for someone that had shared with them victories and defeats in the previous two years and three days. Many fans and colleagues did not appreciate the change, nor the treatment reserved to Pete. One year later, in 1963, we get the fourth of six consecutive nights at the Odeon Cinema in Ladidno, Wales, for the Beatles, naturally with Ringo Starr on drums. On the 15th of August 1965, the Beatles kicked off their new North American tour, playing a historic concert at the Shea Stadium. Anticipation for the tour was great in Britain, and the BBC sent Brian Matthew to be part of the group's entourage until the 20th of August. It was worth it. The concert, featuring support acts Brenda Holloway and the King Curtis Band, Cannibal and the Headhunters, and Sound Incorporated, took place in front of 55,600 fans, including Mick Jagger and Keith Richard. It was a new world record in terms of attendance and gross revenue. $304,000, about $2,508,000 in 2020 money, with another record for the share of $160,000, about $1,320,000, destined to the Beatles. The band's arrival, after the New York City's authorities vetoed an entry by helicopter, took place in a Wells Fargo armored truck, with the Fabs walking on the stage at 9.16 pm among screaming fans. 2,000 people were engaged for the security alone. The Beatles' repertoire for the concert and for the rest of their North American tour comprised of Twist and Shout, a truncated version, She's a Woman, I Feel Fine, Dizzy Miss Lizzie, Ticket to Ride, Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby, Can't Buy Me Love, Babies in Black, Act Naturally, A Hard Day's Night, Help, and I'm Down. The show, with sequences shot backstage and a helicopter ride from the New York's waterfront to the World's Fair building, was filmed by Sullivan Productions, head Sullivan's company, in association with NEMS Enterprises and Suba Films for a 48-minute-long TV special, becoming 60 minutes with commercials. It was premiered in black and white, British TV started to introduce color only in 1967, by BBC One on the 1st of March 1966, airing between 8 and 8.50 pm, and, this time in color, on the 10th of January 1967, by the US network ABC between 7.30 and 8.30 pm, Eastern Standard Time. The film omitted She's a Woman and Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby. Brian Matthews' report for the night, with interviews to the Beatles, was aired on the 16th of August on BBC Radio's Today, between 7.15 and 7.45 am, and again between 8.15 and 8.40 am. Another taped contribution from Matthew was broadcast during BBC Radio's Roundabout 65, 
aired on the 16th of August between 5.31 and 6.45 pm. Another tour for the Beatles in 1966. Before the concert, five members of Prince George's County Ku Klux Klan, led by the Imperial Wizard of the Maryland Klan, paraded outside the DC Stadium in Washington, DC, the venue that hosted tonight's concert. The band had arrived in town in the afternoon and regularly started their one show at 8 pm, in front of 32,164 fans. The Beatles and their entourage travelled to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at the end of the show, again by Greyhound Bus. On this day in 1968, the Beatles started working on Rocky Raccoon, a new song by Paul. From 7 pm to 3 am, John on bass and harmonica, Paul on vocals and acoustic guitar, and Ringo on drums recorded nine takes of the rhythm track, while George Harrison waited in the control room of Studio 2 of the EMI Studios. Then, after a reduction of take 9 into take 10, John Lennon overdubbed a harmonium and a harmonica track. Producer George Martin hammered the part on a honky tonk piano, and John, Paul, and George Harrison a track of backing vocals. At the end of the session, John and Paul took home a rough mono mix of the new song, while George and Ringo brought home a rough mix of Year Blues. Before concluding the episode with a glorious string session, let me thank you once again for your support. Comments, shares, and donations come a long way to help me producing more music related content and building a growing community of people that want to know more about all things music. If you're new here and you don't know what to do, please visit www.simonmas.com support and take some time and or money to make the difference. Thank you! On the 15th of August 1969, in two sessions, orchestral overdubs were recorded for Golden Slumber's Carry That Weight, The End, Something and Here Comes the Sun. George Martin, who had realized the arrangements for £150, about £2,500 in 2020 money, directed the musicians in Studio One while the audio was recorded in Studio Two, thanks to the closed-circuit TV of the EMI Studios, used for the first time to facilitate the work of a recording session. Between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, 12 violins, 4 violas, 4 cellos, 1 double bass, 4 horns, 3 trumpets, 1 trombone and 1 bass trombone, recorded the parts for Golden Slumber's Carry That Weight and The End. The orchestra played the part on the Love You finale of the latter song, although this was not used for the final mix of the piece. During the second session, between 7 pm and 1.15 am, 12 violins, 4 violas, 4 cellos and 1 double bass recorded the score for something. Then, 4 violas, 4 cellos, 1 double bass, 2 clarinets, 2 alto flutes, 2 flutes and 2 piccolos recorded the score for Here Comes the Sun. George Harrison alternated with George Martin on the conductor's podium, for the role of producer in the control room, and also managed to record a new guitar solo for the middle section of Something in Studio 2 while Martin was conducting the orchestra in Studio 1. The names of the classical musicians were not recorded, but they cost EMI a total of £697 and 2 shillings, about £11,550 in 2020 money. The curtain is drawing on today's episode. Join me tomorrow to see how the sacking of Beat Best went down. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.